What's up with y'all? What's up with y'all? Welcome back to Moxie Approved. Well, this beef came out of nowhere. In the last 24 hours, Uncle Luke, Luther Campbell, has pretty much been taking shots on X, AKA Twitter, at Tariq Nasheed. He's making some points, but he's also deflecting and bringing up things that don't have anything to do with this conversation. But I will, I do wanna say this from the top. Uh, I think that this is a conversation that needs to be had because I think the people, when I mean the people, I think black people in America, whether they FBA or non-FBA, needs to hear this conversation. So let's start from the top because these boys been going at it. I mean, it was just a tweet like a half an hour ago. So they've been going at it through the night about this topic. Luke is pretty much upset that Tariq Nasheed is not really supporting Kamala Harris in the Democratic Party. And what he's adding to it is this whole thing about FBA, Foundational Black American. It was a clip with him calling him an agent. Uh, I've heard that one before. That's a group of black men and most of them hang out on Twitter. Tariq Nasheed. Uh, oh my God. I do not like him. You know, I swear, I feel like he's an agent. An agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then there's something else that he brought up that uh, is pretty much not true. Mind you, here's the guy who's talking about descendants of slaves, you know, uh, married to a, a white lady. <laughs> you know, which I'm like, are y'all following him? You know what I'm saying? So I like. I do notice when people want to take shots at someone and they don't really have all their facts together. What they like to do is they like to attack the messenger and not really the message. So he's saying that Tariq Nasheed has a white wife. Uh, I don't really like going to people's family business and stuff like that, but I looked up a picture. Her name is Peanut Nasheed. I looked up a picture of his wife. That don't really look white to me. That don't look PFD at all. Maybe she mixed with some white or whatever, but that definitely looks like a black woman to me. But that is not the point, and that shouldn't have been the point of some of Luke's problems with Tariq Nasheed. Now, I can't go on without mentioning, y'all know I had a problem with Tariq Nasheed not too long ago about him going on a PFD DJ Vlad show after we were all upset about him and the professor. But right now, right now is not the time to talk about that. And I'm gonna tell you why. I've noticed many times in my life with these PFDs, they'll have a problem with each other. But if somebody black, whether they're an FBA or non-FBA, has a problem with one of them, they'll solve their issues and go after the black person. I've seen it many times. And hopefully that's something that we can we can do together. Luke does speak for a group of people that are non-FBA, and I've been hearing their voice a lot lately. Yeah, at the end of the day, they get on there, they, they fool these people with these doctors and these books and all that, and uh, they try and they try and separate the black community. And there's one thing they always leave out the hatred that comes from them themselves and their family. I tell you what, I don't know about you, but in my personal life, I've taken hatred from people from the West Indies. The only ones I never had a problem with were the Jamaicans. But not to go off a topic, Luke brought this up. He also brought up an interesting factor. We talk about how Minister Louis Farrakhan, he comes from a non-FBA background, and Malcolm X. Uh, his mom, I believe, was from Granada, even though his father is definitely FBA, but he wanted to bring that up. And I'll say this, those men were living in our country and chose to fight with us. If you want to talk about this separation, whatever, I don't even know what they got to do with the conversation. But as much as they built us up, we built them up too. But I've said on my channel many times before that at some point, I feel like we should try to work with non-FBA. I don't know when that point is gonna be. Maybe when we stop seeing videos going viral of them talking bad about our culture, rocking Jordans and stuff like that. I'm not cultured at all. Stop big body. I don't wanna hear, like, when I'm asking general questions, I'm not asking y'all, stop big body. That niggas is, is black. You're black. You're, you're just black. But I believe at some point, just like how Malcolm X was, at some point, we need to try to work with these people. One of my statements that I still stand by is I'd rather be an asset than an enemy. And I'm not saying that we have to take people talking shit to us, right? 
because they need to be checked. And tethers sometimes need to be checked. But y'all know over here, I'm more worried about the PFDs because those PFDs, these are some of the most evilest people to ever walk the face of the earth. And I don't want to forget this. He brought up Malcolm X. Well, let's look at what Malcolm X had to say about the Democratic Party. When you see this, you can see that the Negro vote is the key factor. And despite the fact that you are in a position to, de to be the determining factor, what do you get out of it? The Democrats have been in Washington, D.C. only because of the Negro vote. They've been down there four years. And they're all other legislation they wanted to bring up, they brought it up and gotten it out of the way, and now they bring up you. And now they bring up you. You put them first, and they put you last. Because you're a chump. A political chump. In Washington, D.C., in the House of Representatives, there are 257 who are Democrats. Only 177 are Republicans. In the Senate, there are 67 uh, Democrats. Only 33 are Republicans. The party that you bass controls two-thirds of the House of Representatives and the Senate, and still they can't keep their promise to you, because you're a chump. Both these guys were going back and forth with tweets, and Tariq Nasheed pointed out the fact that Luke has been tap dancing for the Democratic Party, and someone found a tweet where yeah, it looks like Luke is playing both sides. And that makes me think that Luke might be an agent himself, especially when you understand why people don't support the Democrat. You said it yourself, Luke. So that came off as very weird to me, being that you understand the Democratic Party don't really do anything. Now, talking about Kamala Harris, it's been over a month. She hasn't given no type of press conference or anything like that. She's been going off this whole thing that she's black and everything. She ain't said no policies for the black people at all. Now you'll say, well, Donald Trump, he's not doing anything. I think people that feel that way haven't necessarily been paying attention. Look, it was a blunder. It definitely was a blunder, but Donald Trump held an event at a barber shop in Atlanta. So at least the guy is trying. I'm gonna say right now he's trying more than the Democrats, but Tyreek is sorta of like me where we've been preaching the couch. I don't go for either one of these parties. Small-minded people think that if you're against one side, you gotta be with the other side. And that's a two-party system and that's the BS that they are trying to get us caught up in. Look at what the Democrats is doing. They passing bills to make it easier for immigrants to get housing. When I say immigrants, more than likely illegal immigrants to get housing. We're living in a time where American Americans are having problems getting a house. And you're already working on making sure immigrants get the house. Why would you vote for somebody like that? Why? So at least Donald Trump has, is trying to help out or at least is saying that he wants to do something. It's funny. He proposed a no tax on tips bill, right? At the center of our plan for economic relief, are massive tax cuts for workers that include something else that's turned out to be very popular, actually. Here it's very popular, this building and all those hotels that I saw that are so nice, I'm staying in a nice one. It's called No Tax on Tips. No Tax on Tips. No and then you hear Kamala Harris. And it is my promise to everyone here, when I am president, we will continue our fight for working families of America, including to raise the minimum wage and eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. <laughs> and I think the issue for a lot of us is Kamala Harris is not running off her policy so far. She's running off the fact that she's supposed to be black. And we already went through that with Barack Obama where he ran off this, I'm black, the first black president, and we got nothing out of that. Barack made it worse. So as a community, we're pretty tired of that. The point of all this is, is just trying to see what the American black community can get out of this. Because people are running off our likeness and not giving anything to us. And I know y'all have seen this clip of Kamala Harris saying that she don't want to make no bill for blacks. I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. Another interview I saw with Kamala Harris Art, and she said, somebody asked her, what are y'all gonna do for black people? And she said, we can't pass laws just for black people. No. And then to take it back to Trump having that meeting at the barbershop in Atlanta, that didn't go right because y'all know Atlanta loves Fannie Willis. They love Fannie Willis. So the guy lost business and he was upset. Started with a text, 
Then it went to a call, because I was actually out the country. And just me agreeing to do a, a, a black small business, you know, round table, thinking about black business in Atlanta, small black businesses in Atlanta. And I'm like, okay, so when are we gonna start talking about this? He says a call from former President Trump during the event cut deep. Why is the president, ex-president calling somebody in my barbershop? We had some, some calls. Thursday, we definitely got some calls, some backlash, some angry people that don't know me. And I have to deal with that. I have no involvement in politics. We don't even talk politics in my barbershop. It's all sports. Command everybody to vote. But that's your business. And even though you can find event reminders online before that event that he was having a campaign event in the barbershop, the guy flat out there went and said that he don't know that. Why, why you think they were setting up all these cameras there, dude? But I get it. You were losing business. But the point of it is, is at some point, the American black community, we have to deal with whoever at least is talking about helping us out because we all know they can do a lot of talking and once they get in office, not do anything. But at least they're saying something. You got one side that's trying and did something. Then you got another side that haven't done anything other than say that I'm black. And if and when Kamala Harris wins, you do understand that Jamaicans and Indians will be celebrating that they have somebody that finally made it to the White House. That don't sound like a black person to me. Oh, and I'm not saying I'm pro-Trump because I'm not. I'm for the couch. But, you know, I'm very interested in how y'all feel about this in the comment section. These guys have an event today on Twitter space and you know Moxie gonna be there listening. Hopefully Tariq Nasheed will pull up because uh, I don't know. I got a feeling he could debate circles around Uncle Luke. Well, anyway, you know how we like to end our videos over here at Moxie Approved, right? With that water. I'll see y'all here next time on Moxie Approved.